Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, for those who are joining us for the second time, welcome back. For those who are new to us, welcome. Um, today, we're going to speak to HAAA and the Renewal Plan. Landscape Architectural Services within the City of Hamilton um, and the Ward on One Office is developing a renewal plan of the HAAA grounds. The park's current features are reaching the end of their service life. They're getting a little bit older in age. And for safety reasons and for other reasons, we need to replace those. To ensure the community can continue to enjoy the HAAA grounds, these aging park features need to be replaced. The renewal plan process is used to develop an overall park concept that staff will use to plan future park upgrades in a phased multi-year approach. The concept level focuses on things like location of features, the relationship among them, accessibility, inclusion, overall usage and sustainability within the park. Uh, but what the concept level does not do is to focus on the specific details and the nitty gritty information on those amenities within the park. Um, We'll look at that later in the process, but for the time being, we're really putting together a conceptual plan that gives us a vision to follow. During the renewal plan process, we are looking to hear from the community members like yourself. We're looking to hear from those who are actual park users, and we are gonna to refer to them as like the resident experts of the park. So I mentioned about concept and detailed design, and that we're looking at a concept level right now. So when we look at the concept level, on the left side of your screen, you'll see a little excerpt from a plan that was a concept. This is not HAAA, but it is a showing a representation of a, a park conceptual level. We really focus on the ideas that are within the park. We focus on the relationships within it. So the relationship between the place structures, the shade structure and pedestrian pathways. We use generic placeholders and define the areas. We don't necessarily use specific words and what we're actually putting in. Um, we use playground opposed to the type of playground that's being put in. It really presents an overall vision. We take that concept in the end, once we've finalized it, and we use that as a roadmap. So for this project, we're gonna introduce this in a multi-year um, process for implementation, which means we'll take that concept and we'll make sure that we, the end goal, we know what it is, and this gives us the driving force to be able to get there. When we get down to detailed design, that's where we get very detailed. This is when we start breaking down what type of play structure we're gonna have, what colors it is, what amenities are included within it. Um, we make sure that the concept is based, I mean, the detailed design is based on the concept. So there might be some variation from the concept when we start looking at those details, but we try to keep the overall, um, overall layout the same. You can see that little image that's in the bottom right-hand corner. That is the park that's shown on the left. So as you can see, Intersecting pathway was removed. The play structure was consolidated to the south side of the center ellipse. And you can't see it on the screen, but the shade structure was actually shifted to the opposite side. So it's still keeping with the same theme of the concept, but because of the details, when we started looking at them in a little finer detail, we had to shift things around a bit. We also wanna make sure that what we propose meets all our requirements for AODA, CSA requirements, for when we're looking at play structures, there's a lot of requirements for that as well. We wanna make sure that our pathways are at the appropriate rate. We wanna make sure that amenities within the park like benches, water fountain, um, the track, accesses are all accessible for everybody. So that's the difference between the concept and detail. And for the renewal plan, we're really focusing on that concept level right now. To ensure the renewal plan is successful, we need your help. The renewal plan process will be a best executed in a collaborative effort between city staff and the HAAA grounds community. We really need that feedback from yourselves. During our first round of feedback, we received a lot. It really helped us put together the concepts. The renewal plan process typically includes public information centers. This is our second. We started this project back in February. We provide ample opportunity for community feedback via different avenues. Um, the last session, we opened it up for a month. We had different tools that we could use and we'll consolidate those and talk about those in a couple seconds. The design team took that information. We really summarized it. We used that to steer us in preparing the two concepts that we're gonna present this evening. Detailed design and construction of the multi-year phase approach, that'll come. So right now we're aiming for September, so early fall, is when we're gonna start looking at a, a focused engagement on what we're gonna deem as phase one works. So come September, we hope to have what we're gonna to refer to as a preferred renewal plan. So after tonight, when we do our uh, 
community feedback. So we receive as much information as we can over the next four weeks. We're gonna take the information, we're gonna consolidate the plans the best we can. And we'll come back in September and present what we're gonna to refer to as preferred plan. And from that point forward, we'll start looking at the details. So where we are, so as I mentioned already, we did start this in February. So this is our second PIC. So back in February on Thursday evening and Saturday afternoon, Saturday morning, sorry, we hosted two PIC events. The Thursday evening was, was attended by about 110 people. And on the Thursday, or the Saturday morning, sorry, it was attended by about 40 people. We had a long question and answer period at the end of the Thursday evening and also on the Saturday. These questions and answers were answered formally via Zoom, but we also posted them online. For those who weren't able to attend, they're still available at our HAAA Hamilton website, hamilton.ca forward slash HAAA renewal. From that PIC, we had a four week window um, that we had to engage Hamilton and we had engagement tools open to the public. So we collect as much feedback as possible. We'll get into that in a couple of seconds. That brings us to today. We took that feedback, we prepared two concepts that we will present in a little while. And that brings us to tonight. We're gonna to present these concepts and then we're gonna open a round of engagement again. So after tonight, I ask you to go visit Engage Hamilton, the HAAA project, which we'll get into later, contact myself, reach out to the counselor's office, provide you an opportunity to provide comments on those sketches, on the concepts that we're gonna present. We'll collect those concepts, we'll collect that information, and then we'll prepare what I mentioned as a preferred concept. We plan on presenting that in September. And after that evening, we will start what we're gonna deem as the focused engagement for phase one works. At this time, we don't necessarily know what phase one will entail because we don't necessarily know what's gonna happen with the renewal plan. We don't know what it's gonna look like. So we have to look at that and figure out the logistics to implement this in a phased approach. So as come September, we'll have a better understanding of what the overall idea will be, the conceptual plan. And that's when we'll start engaging in a detailed, focused phase one amenity. So for example, if a basketball court and the spray pad were part of phase one, we would start looking at that in greater detail and have a little engagement period. So we'd have a smaller session. And then we'd start working on detailed design with anticipation of doing construction in the spring of 2022. And then that same cycle will happen for phase two. And if we go with phase three, it'll happen in that cycle again. But for now, we're really focused on the concept and we wanna make sure that what we bring forward as a renewal plan works for the community. So as I mentioned, PIC number one, back in February, we had a lot of questions. So we had a couple exercises. We had our session, we had a Q and A session at the end of it. We also opened up what we referred to as Gage Hamilton. So it's a project website where we encourage community engagement. And we had a question and answer period on there. So as I mentioned, we received over hundred questions formally at the PIC. And through our Engage Hamilton, we received another 15 questions. They're all posted on there currently and they will remain on there for the rest of the project. The questions range from anything from, can we include these items in the park? What's the budget? What's the timeline? Have we considered other amenities within the park? The answers are all on there as well. I encourage you to go visit the site if you haven't done it yet and have a look at the questions that were asked by your fellow community members. Another exercise that we completed post PIC is we opened up a survey. So we had a survey with 30 questions in it and we had 128 respondents complete the survey. So of those 31 questions, we consolidated them. We can see these pie graphs that are shown on as a representation of some of the results. We took that information and then we used that to help shape what our design was gonna look like. 128 responses were received. We learned that the majority of the respondents live within walking distance to the park. The most used amenities within the park are the walking track, green space, and pathways, while additional amenities desired include shade structures, pathway lighting, and exercise equipment. So this is the kind of information that we collected through that survey and really helped us guide us to where we are today. Now that survey is not online. The results are not posted on the website today, but they will be posted after the weekend. So after this weekend, we're gonna have some updates to that website. We'll talk about that later in the presentation, but I just wanted to let you know that that survey information and the results will be available to you. So through the Engage Hamilton, which I've mentioned a couple of times now, 
we have another exercise. It was called idea share. Um, it was called ideas. So we had 120, well, 425 ideas were posted in the form of images and sketches that were provided as inspiration towards the renewal of the park. Now these ideas, as you can see on the screen, they really ranged from everything. So this was an open opportunity where the community could post an image, put a request, show an example of something they've seen elsewhere that they'd love to see incorporated in these AAA. With 425 and 122 specific items, it was a great insight for us. It gave us a really good backbone to be able to propose things, include new amenities, really figure out what the community wanted. And as you can see on these photos, if you're familiar with um, social media, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the heart. So when those, uh, those items were up, other users can join through Engage Hamilton and they can click on it and say they really appreciate, they really like this idea. So when they clicked on that heart, it basically showed that it had support from other members of the community. Now, a lot of these ideas are great. Um, unfortunately, with 425 of them, we really had to pick and choose. HAAA is a very nice site, a very big site, but we do have a lot of amenities in there. And um, we had to make sure that what we could produce and move forward with would actually work within the site. Another idea that came from us through Engage Hamilton tool was a mapping tool. So this mapping tool um, allowed users to highlight areas within HAAA. Now, because of the limitations of the program, we weren't able to zoom in really close but we were able to get to a, where we're looking at now. Um, so users would put a pin on the map and those pins would be associated with play structures, play, active play, passive play, washrooms, concerns, um, problem areas. So the community really highlighted what they see and what they do and how the park actually works for them now. Again, we took all that information, consolidated it, looked at it and really summarized it down to make sure that when we were looking at the concepts, we really listened to what was being presented to us and how those users are, act, are actually using the park. These two exercises are still shown on the Engage Hamilton site. They're not open for the next round for more comment, but they are open that you can physically see and you can see what was commented on. So they'll always be there for us to reference back to. So with that, um, that was the engagement portion. And as I mentioned, after tonight, we're gonna to open another engagement window. And that engagement window will look a little different, but we'll talk about that later on. This is the information that we've used to really steer us in preparing the next two concepts so that in a couple of seconds, I'm gonna hand it off to Marianne Murphy, and she's gonna walk us through the two presentations. So I ask you just to remember that we're looking at this from a conceptual level. We're looking at this to make sure that the park has a fit that we're looking for. And any items that we have not addressed specifically um, I encourage you to ask questions and um, interact with us. And then at, after tonight, we'll have an opportunity to collect information for the next four weeks, plus minus could be a little bit longer. And we'll collect as much feedback as possible on what we thought of these two concepts. So at this point, I'd like to hand the mic over to Marianne McCricky from OMC Landscape Architecture, who will walk us through the concepts. Thank you, Wes. And good evening, everyone. We're happy to be here this evening to talk about the conceptual design features at HAAA. At the first PIC, you probably recall that we heard a lot about the history of sport at HAAA, um, the Hamilton Tigers, and, and there were a lot of rich images of the history that were presented. The cultural heritage evaluation report that was prepared by ARA Limited also touches on er other areas of the park of cultural value, um, surprisingly maybe or not, it's the west side of the park that was developed in the 1970s. This west side of the park is representative of park design in Canada at that time, which co coincidentally, um, it, uh, it was also a time of the rise of the profession of landscape architecture in Canada. And at that time, the design philosophy included the reintroduction of greening into urban areas while creating passive and mixed outdoor recreational spaces for the urban residents. Now, the, the quote from the report on the left-hand side of the screen really is a lovely description of what HAAA Grounds is, a harmonious balance between the emerging park design philosophy while, remain, while maintaining the sport infrastructure that defines the history. 
So those early principles, the idea of a balance of uses, green natural space, opportunities for exercise, we still think about those things when we design neighborhood parks these days. But there are other things that we think about too now, and they include the quality of that green space, sustainability, accessibility, and inclusion of native plant materials and new technologies. And a lot of these were issues that were shared in your comments and your survey responses to us. In synthesizing the, the hundreds of comments and ideas, some things seem to rise to the top. Key takeaways, maintain the character of the park, accessibility, of course, balance of passive and active play, and of course, many, many people wanted more shade and trees in the park, improvements to the track, and play facilities for all ages and abilities. Neighborhood connections in terms of urban design and neighborhood shortcuts and connectivity were identified as extremely important, and areas for neighborhood programming space, places where people could get together from the neighborhood and spend time together. Design is quite a balancing act when you consider the, we start with an inventory of the site, what is there, how much space is there, what is the quality of the site, and then layer upon layer upon layer of history and neighborhood needs and people's requirements and activities and of course the budget and the infrastructure down below. So it's quite a balancing act before we get to the point of trying to put pen to paper and put it all together. There are two concept, conceptual plans only that have been developed. Option A, just to describe it simply, is a strong spine. And most of the major features are located where they are today, generally. So th this is what concept A could look like with that strong spine and the features generally in the same locations. I'm not gonna go into this slide a lot. I have um, enlargements that are easier to see. This will be posted on the website so you can go into the details and look at all the different features. But I think we'll move to the next slide, which is larger and you can see better. So this is the north side. That strong pedestrian connection that was so desired is, is able to be achieved if the track is reduced in length from 400 meters to 350. It opens up opportunities at both the north side of the park and also the south side. So in this concept, perhaps some additional exercise or play features could be introduced. Adult play equipment, uh, sorry, not play equipment, fitness equipment for the adults. Maybe it's play equipment. A skate dot, um, small entrance areas at the beginnings of the, the park entrances, both at Tucket and Duke. And moving southward, the play space is generally located where it is today, with the spray pad moved closer to where the junior um, children's play space is. So junior um, for the city of Hamilton is children under five. Senior is regarded as children ages five to 12. So as we go southward, the complexity or, or the age uh, suitability of the equipment, um, it, it, it becomes more suitable for the older children. If you can go to the next slide. We received some comments about the fact that there doesn't seem to be much for teenagers to do. So the concept here would involve, once, once we pass through the area where the fives to twelves would be playing, maybe there would be some opportunities for, I would call it gross motor activity um, for older kids, the teenagers, maybe the young adults, perhaps some incorporation of rocks into the berms. Um, bouldering was mentioned. There is an example of bouldering at McMaster University. They only have a couple of, of pieces, uh, one large one and one smaller one. Uh, bouldering could be quite an interesting piece on the site if there were a number of them located in different sizes and shapes so that people of different ages and abilities could access them. In this concept, the basketball facility is roughly in the same location where it is now. And there is an urban, urban 
sized plaza that stretches from the southwest corner right through to the front of the, pardon me, the north side of the H to play building. We see the shortening of the track and the reduction in size of the soccer field as an opportunity for increased tree planting, even within the field itself outside of the play area. If you look carefully at the plaza here, you can see that the trees surrounding the seating area where there could be tables and chairs, picnic tables, they, they actually create um, somewhat of an outdoor room. Option B is similar to option A in that there is still a strong central pathway. It's intended to be a shared pathway four meters wide that would accommodate pedestrians and bicycles and connects from Duke Street to Charlton. The difference in this concept from concept A is that it's a, it, just a, as a high level concept, it's a series of connected rooms that, that connect up the side of the park. So that's the overall organization of concept B. Generally, the children's play spaces are a little more contained. They're farther away from the central spine. If you see the circular, um, the circular shape in the middle of the area, just to the left of the track. That's intended to be a large circular pavilion. We did calculations from Charlton Avenue to that distance and at a very gentle slope of two or two and a half percent, about a meter and a half could be gained in height and a large pavilion space for gatherings or events could be located there. And it could work well with the existing berms. There would be views, across the track from this location, steps down to the track and views of the children's play spaces to the west. This is the north end. And as I mentioned, the more active play, it's basically flipped with the older kids and older adults, young adults at the north end. When we looked at this plan, we imagined what it would be like sometime in the future to be walking between that pathway between uh, Duckett, um, Tuckett and Duke under a canopy of trees that close over the pathway and shade the track and the pedestrian walk. We intend to work with the berms and perhaps even create new topography depending on space limitations. So as we move southward, you can see just the tail end of the senior play area and a larger spray pad that flows generally between the two play spaces with more active water features at the north end where the older children play and scaled down features at the south end where the youngest children would be playing. The gathering space is a quieter space than what you saw on the previous concept. The previous concept had a gathering space that was associated with the basketball. So that would be more associated with watching and hanging out where the basketball is taking place. This would be a quieter space and it's distinct and separate from the plaza that is immediately north of the HAAA building. If you look on the east side, there's a note that says crossing points to protect trees. The idea being that there's a lot of traffic between the school children during the school day to the track and to the field. And if the trees were situated in a way with crossing points in between, the intent is that they would have a better chance of surviving and achieving um, good health and good size in future if there was less compaction over their roots with pedestrian traffic directed between them. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about trees at HAAA. Um, the existing trees are, the species are, are quite typical of park planting design of the 1970s, tough species that would survive urban conditions. But the renewal plan is intending to introduce new native trees in the park. And that was something that came up quite often in your comments and suggestions. And just some schematics illustrating the tree growth that eventually, eventually will have canopy coverage. Um, you're probably aware, many of you are, that the forestry department is 
on a campaign to increase canopy coverage in the city of Hamilton. And this is a real opportunity to contribute to that effort at HAAA. I'd like to just summarize now on the next slide. The park renewal concepts that we're presenting today do build on the legacy of sports in Hamilton, spanning over 150 years, with some changes, of course, with the change from football to soccer and a shorter track and re slight repositioning of the track. But it does allow for more pedestrian connections across the north and the south ends of the park. The evolution and the reimagination of park design across Canada in the 70s was in identified in the Cultural Heritage Report as a special feature at HAAA. And the renewal concepts presented today respect the original design through the upgrading and renewal of existing features, but also anticipating new ways to play and exercise. So once your comments have, have been completed, we will begin to synthesize and bring the two concepts into one final renewal concept plan. The cultural heritage folks will also include a review of that final design concept, and they will provide some commentary and guidance toward that. Your role. We're asking that you review each of the concepts and provide your comments on the ideas and the items that you see. First, we ask that you review the general arrangements of proposed features. And second, we're asking if that you review the individual elements that are preferred for inclusion, and also ideas, if there's something that you see that's missing, um, if there's something you would prefer in favor of another element. So please provide your comments on those items. And at the end, uh, it'll be September, I believe, in the fall, the final concept will be based on ideas presented today, community perspectives as to which are preferred. I'd now like to turn the presentation back to Wes and he'll talk about the next steps. Thanks, Marianne. So as I mentioned earlier today, today we're sitting at PIC number two, so the larger green circle you see in the middle of your screen. So after today, the concepts and this presentation will be posted on the Engage Hamilton website tomorrow. You'll actually be able to download the presentation and be able to draw upon those two concepts that we've shown Zoom in and out, move around, see what's happening, um, see what your favorite spot in the park looks like now or what we're proposing in that area. And when we look for comments, we're looking for comments on everything. We're looking for comments on what you like, what you don't like, what the best part of the park is, what the worst part is. And we're gonna take all those information and we're gonna see what we can do and how we can combine all that and mesh it together to prepare a preferred concept. So that means if you like something from option B and you would love to see it in option A, you wanna hear that because there is always a chance that we can incorporate something from both. The end result we do see as a hybrid approach of what we've presented tonight. We don't necessarily think that one option is going to be predominant favorite of everybody. I think we're gonna be able to pick and choose what we like and we'll mesh those together and create that preferred concept. We'll work on that for the next couple months and then September is when we're gonna present that. That will be a preferred concept. And then that next PIC is when we will introduce what we will be looking at for phase one. And on that same evening, we will launch the phase one engagement. So we will start focusing on what those amenities are that are in phase one and what we actually want to see on site. So if we use the basketball court as an example, we want to make sure that that basketball court is, um, I've spoken with the council previously, that we really want to see, make this basketball court a great court for the HAAA community. So we'll focus on the basketball court. If we are focusing on a seating area, we want to make sure that the benches and this location and that we're meeting accessibility standards um, if we want to look at play structures, then we'll focus on the, the type of play structure, the colors, the themes, what we want to see in that play structure, what amenities we like, what we don't like. How do we include that accessibility factor? What items do we want to see? So that's when we get into the great, the, the great details, the real fun stuff when we start looking at and picking out equipment the best we can. Um, and then from that point forward, we'll move to design, detail design with a spring construction schedule for that phase one work. And as I mentioned, we don't necessarily know what phase one work will be until we know what the renewal plan will end up as. So to recap, we came together today to speak to the renewal plan. This renewal plan 
is a result of aging infrastructure that's happening within the park. A lot of the amenities are reaching its life cycle um, replacement time window. A lot of them have reached that a couple of years ago. They've been a little bit of life support. We should be looking at them to replace them. You might have noticed recently in HAAA that the bridge was removed from the play structure. That was removed because of a safety reason. And we, because of the age of that structure, we're having a hard time putting in a new bridge. So I think it was replaced with a ground level panel at some point. But those are the reasons that we're looking at this whole renewal plan. The renewal plan is going to be a, a concept of the whole park that really guides us in implementing a multi-year construction project. So phase one construction, we're anticipating in 2022 again. We really need your feedback. We need your feedback to really drive us and make sure that the renewal plan is meeting the community needs. Without that feedback, we're basing it off of what we've heard previously in the past. The more feedback we get, the more informed we are. So I mentioned how we can participate. So again, we have Engage Hamilton. For those who are new and have not been to Engage Hamilton, this is a City of Hamilton engagement platform. We have a lot of projects on there, HAAA being one of them. So as you're on there, you can be looking at HAAA, and then you find out about the urban tree canopy that uh, Marion referred to earlier. And you can put some comments in on that as well. In this Engage Hamilton, we are going to post this presentation. It should be there tomorrow. And then you can download it. And you can download it, and you'll also be able to find uh, a video of this presentation. While you're on Engage Hamilton, there'll be a comment section. I believe the comment section is actually called Guestbook for us. And in that guestbook, you can put comments down on how you feel about the park. Now, those comments will be posted online so other people can see them. They're not an interactive comment at that point. They are basically us receiving as many comments as possible. So if you have a comment about a specific park or a specific concept, I encourage you to make sure you identify what concept you're referring to. And if it's a general comment, a general comment. And you can, get, you can be more detailed, you can be pretty, pretty quick. However you want to provide your comments, you can do it that way. Another alternative is to send me a direct email. You can also reach out to the Ward 1 office. And we will be collecting that. And there's also a Q&A session on Engage Hamilton. So while you're on there, there's a question and answer. If you're looking for a response to a question, use the question and answer forum opposed to the guest book. The guest book is just providing comments. The Q&A is the actual interaction. We will answer the questions and they will be posted for everyone to see. The questions that we collect tonight will be summarized into a PDF document and we will post that as well. So just because you've posted it tonight, you don't necessarily have to go to the, guest, uh, the Engage Hamilton to post it. You can if you'd like to see it on Engage Hamilton as part of that process, but it will be posted via a PDF that we will post on the website itself. There's also the City of Hamilton website. So it's hamilton.ca forward slash HAAA renewal. You can refer to that through the Engage Hamilton site. And that's where a lot of our documents for the project set. That's where we keep them. Um, you can download them from there as well. And that's where the information from the previous presentation. And to this point, you'll be able to download any document from there. So with that, I thank you for your time.